We keep seeing all over the Western media, we must never again allow Afghanistan to become a base for international terrorism. Well, guess what? America left the Parwan military prison behind. Thousands of foreign nationals who are alleged members of international terrorist groups have reportedly been released by the Taliban. Thanks to policy made by Joe Biden and Barack Obama back in 2012, Afghanistan is essentially being seeded with a giant fresh crop of foreign nationals who are members of international terrorist groups, groups like ISIS, TTP, the Uzbek Islamic Movement, and other international groups, all of which are actually more radical than the Taliban is. So after the United States invaded Afghanistan, uh, we built a gigantic base called Bagram. And apparently it was on the site of what used to be a U.S. military base in the 50s, I believe. And then outside of Bagram, we started building a giant prison. And this is where we were putting foreign nationals that we accused of being uh, members of jihadist groups. The Parwan prison actually predates the United States taking people to Guantanamo Bay even. Well, when Obama and Biden came into power, it became uh, a real hot potato because the Democratic Party was embracing the whole social justice thing and the whole, oh, people in prison are all victims and blah, 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 blah. And there was, there was outrage that, oh, why aren't we rehabilitating these people? We're just being mean to them. And there was federal lawsuits to try to give them the rights of American citizens. And essentially for legal reasons, and because it became a hot potato within the Democratic Party, uh, Biden and Obama uh, basically gave control of the prison to the Afghan government. And so it was like this whole thing where over the period of about a year, the Afghan government slowly took more and more control of it. And then there was all kinds of new scandals because then the Afghan government was just releasing people like crazy, including people we accused of being major terrorists and people that had, you know, set off bombs, that murdered lots of people, uh, et cetera. But uh, a few days ago, there was still like 6,000 people in this facility. And the Afghan government had been mixing uh, regular Afghan convicts into the prison population, but the majority were supposedly still uh, foreign jihadists. And a lot of them were people apprehended in the past five to 10 years. Now the incompetence, the mismanagement, the lack of foresight, so extreme. I can see why people would just jump to a conspiracy and say, oh, well, obviously the United States government planned this all along and we wanted to uh, make Afghanistan an international base of terrorism all over again. I'm not saying it's a conspiracy, but I'm saying the reality is that thousands of foreign nationals, some of whom are, you know, the Central Asian leaders of ISIS and leaders of TTP and uh, other groups from Tajikistan and Uzbekistan and whatnot, are, are probably released into Afghan society. And uh, so basically, uh, Afghanistan has now like instantaneously become a hotbed of international terrorism all over again. Now, that being said, will the Taliban allow international jihadist, Salafist terrorist groups to thrive in Afghanistan? Well, you don't accomplish what you've accomplished over the past few weeks by being stupid. There's obviously some people in charge of the Taliban who at least have some functioning intelligence. And the leading experts 
on the issue are saying there's no way the Taliban would ever cooperate with al-Qaeda again. Because uh, essentially, uh, Osama bin Laden betrayed them. Because when the Taliban was in power the first time, they, their law was based on a combination of Sharia law and uh, Pashtun law. And so the, the Pashtun, there's this term for it that's, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Pashtun Wala or something. But essentially, it's, it's all like codes of conduct. And a lot of it has to do with uh, hospitality. So essentially, historically, the Pashtun are a warrior society. And they'd have the, these codes of, of conduct, which would be like their version of chivalry. And a lot of this has to do with the laws of hospitality. One of them is that if someone has offered you hospitality, you cannot attack a third party without their permission. And so uh, Al-Qaeda, according to the experts on Pashtun culture, the Al-Qaeda violated the basic Pashtun laws of hospitality and the, the Taliban will never work with them again. Now, what I'm seeing right now is that the Taliban is actually confiscating weapons all over Afghanistan. So they're saying only the Taliban is allowed to own weapons and they're confiscating weapons from other hardline Islamic groups. And so I assume this goes for TTP and other groups that are allegedly active in Afghanistan right now. Uh, of course, we'll have to wait and see what really happens. Now, another thing I want to talk about is China. Uh, the Chinese embassy in Kabul is still open, still fully functional. A spokesman for the Chinese foreign minister said that they are looking forward to friendly relations with the Taliban and they hope to uh, begin infrastructure projects in Afghanistan. So the Chinese, if you don't know, they're currently engaged in major infrastructure projects in Pakistan, Tajikistan, and other Central Asian countries. They've got the, the Kira... Koram Highway in Pakistan, also known as the uh, Pakistani Chinese Friendship Highway. They've got the uh, Dushanbe Chinook Highway in Tajikistan. Uh, essentially, China wants to link those highways together through Afghanistan. So both of them going to Afghanistan. Uh, China wants to build a network of highways all over Central Asia so they can move their products all around and, you know, bring back um, the things that they mine in Central Asia back to China. And of course, as I've said in my previous videos, I believe uh, George Bush thought that American companies would develop uh, mining interests in Afghanistan, he thought it would be a boost to the U.S. economy and then people would be happy for his invasion and occupation of Afghanistan. And what happened was state-owned Chinese companies came in with their unlimited resources and outbid American companies. And so China has bought up mineral rights all over Afghanistan and they have billions and billions of dollars set aside already for giant infrastructure projects in Afghanistan. And as it stands right now, they plan to go ahead with these projects. And basically, both sides are saying favorable things. The, the Taliban has been saying for months now that they're having great uh, negotiations with the Chinese. Now, I keep seeing all over social media and whatnot, people comparing this to the fall of Saigon. And really, there is no comparison. This is vastly a bigger debacle, exponentially bigger. The fall of Saigon happened two years after America withdrew military forces from Vietnam. 
and the 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 mismanagement and incompetence in Afghanistan is on a whole nother level. All right. Thanks for watching this video. Click the like button. Post a comment below. Tell me what you think about this. And please subscribe to my channels on BitChute and Odyssey. I'll post links below. And click the subscribe button. New video every few days.